Hello friends and welcome to another Breach Breakdown video. This time we're talking about a pretty serious attack that's happening right now over at Microsoft. Before we get into the breakdown, please like and subscribe to the channel. Enough about that, let's get back into the details. So what exactly is happening over at Microsoft? Well, they're suffering an attack from a Russian-backed nation-state attack group called Midnight Blizzard, who also go by the name Noblin. And this is a really interesting one because this is a sophisticated but incredibly sustained attack. The first indications of the attack happened in late November. It was publicly announced in January 19th and is still going on today. In this video, we're going to walk through exactly the steps that the attackers took, what we know, and what could be possible prevention methods. So what has been compromised right at this moment? Well, what we know is that the attackers have made access into several email addresses. They've made access into several internal Microsoft systems, including internal source code. And they've also found credentials belonging to Microsoft customers. Now, as we said, this first started happening in late November last year, 2023. What we know is that the attackers were able to abuse a legacy account to make access. It was a non-production legacy account. And this is actually a fairly standard method by attackers to try and find unprotected accounts or systems to be able to make access to. In this case, it was a tenant account. So a non-production legacy tenant account. So what exactly is a tenant account? Well, a tenant account is a dedicated instance of the services of Microsoft 365. And your organization's data for Office 365 is stored within a specific location of your tenant account. So basically, this tenant account, even though it was no longer in use, still had access to a lot of emails from Office 365, obviously this Outlook, and then also a lot of data. How they actually attacked that was a password spray attack. So that's basically just throwing passwords at this and just hoping for access eventually. What we know is that Microsoft knew about the attack on January 12th, and it started in November, late November. So somewhere between late November and January 12th, the attackers were able to make access. Basically, their password spray attack worked. What we're not sure is, did that initial access happen in November or did it happen in January or anywhere in between? We're not entirely sure yet. The second step that the attackers took was they pivoted from the tenant account into email addresses. So as we said before, tenant is basically used with Microsoft 365. One of the core products of Microsoft 365 is obviously Outlook, the Microsoft email management system. They were able to get access into multiple email, ad email addresses, including from various different departments, and I'll quote from Microsoft now, uh, including members of the senior leadership team and employees in the cybersecurity, legal, and other functions. So basically, pretty high level email accounts that you would want to have access to if you're an attacker. So they went from tenant into the email addresses, the next obvious step, stage three, started exfiltrating through the data that they could find. What we know here, and at this point, they were able to discover a lot of secrets. And it looks like most of those secrets are belonging to Microsoft customers. So apparently, perhaps being emailed back and forth between customers, perhaps some API keys or passwords. Not, a, <laughs> I think this is fair to say to everyone here, like this is a actually really shitty uh, practice to put in place, emailing passwords in plain text. Uh, but apparently that is, is what happens. You can literally find secrets like passwords, API key certificates anywhere. It's the first thing I'll try and do is, yeah, dump out the environment, try and find secrets, pivot into different systems. So that's exactly what happened in this case. What is also clear is that the attackers are using these secrets. So again, I'll quote from Microsoft, it is apparent that Midnight Blizzard is attempting to use secrets of different types that it has found. All right, so pretty obvious there. Now, the, the final stage that the attackers managed to make was basically to pivot from the email addresses and then move into different Microsoft internal systems, including their private source code repositories. Now, it's not 100% clear of how they made this pivot. There's a couple of options. They could have potentially found access secrets to this whilst exfiltrating the data of the emails. It's not completely out of this world that there were perhaps get access tokens 
in the email addresses, but it's also probable that they were able to basically hijack an account based on the email privileges that they had. So an email account is a high privilege account. You can reset different accounts or create new accounts using that. So perhaps they were able to create or steal access into a Git repository based from the access they had in the emails. It's not entirely clear, but what is clear is that they were able to pivot from those email systems into internal systems. So what's the risk here to Microsoft customers? So Microsoft have said that they've reached out to the customers that are affected. And I'm basically gonna say, if you've ever emailed a plain text credential to Microsoft, now's gonna be a great time to revoke that secret uh, for sure. If you are, it, it doesn't appear that this has affected any native Microsoft systems, right? The attackers are really trying to get into Microsoft using uh, different methods, but it doesn't appear that Microsoft systems themselves have been compromised to any large degree. So there doesn't appear to be any immediate danger if you're just a Microsoft user. However, it might be just a good practice now to take the opportunity to kind of hone in your credentials, uh, scan for secrets if you are in different data areas and messaging systems and emails in your source code, revoke any that you find. It may even be a good time now just to revoke a lot of high value secrets and reissue them uh, to make sure that there's no threat. And what about the lessons learned? What can we learn from this attack? Well, it, it is a sophisticated attack in the sense that it's been sustained for an extremely long time and a lot of resources have gone into this. But the lessons here are fairly basic and things that we, we have to relearn over and over again at the seams. One is protecting legacy apps or just removing them. You know, legacy apps or developer apps or internal apps uh, or accounts is something that attackers will always go after. Uh, often people don't even know that they're still there. So finding these on your systems and deleting them, destroying them, or at least giving them adequate protection uh, is obviously a huge step in having good security. Another lesson that apparently we keep needing to learn is uh, don't share your gosh darn secrets in plain text. Use secrets managers, securely store them, never share them outside of a dedicated service to be able to do this. So secret sprawl is something I talked about a lot. Often secrets you'll find in source code, apparently emails too, in messaging systems. Uh, there's lots of different places where you can find these and use them. So making sure that we have good practices with managing secrets. None of this is cutting edge, right? This is all just basic security stuff that we need to relearn. The trouble is when you get to a company the size of Microsoft, uh, whom I will say have, they have great security in general, but they're a big target, they're a big company, and you, it's difficult to protect everything. So when it comes to a company that size, it's, this is pretty challenging to just do basic stuff correctly uh, now as well. So I hope you enjoyed this breach breakdown. Feel free to add your comments down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We share breach breakdowns like this all the time.